Hey, what's up guys? It's Alan from Creme de la Clutch Exotics. We're back again with our video number two. And this time I'm gonna present to you a video about investing in ball pythons. I even have like a little list that I put together so, uh, so I don't lose track of what I'm going over. And uh, this will be the video that you didn't know you wanted to listen to. So hopefully you guys learn a few good things from me. And if you have any questions, please comment below. I, I wanna go into more in-depth videos of different investments and different projects and stuff like that. This is really more just like an overview from my standpoint, my mentality, there's a lot of videos out there from like, you know, like uh, there's Billy Rose from Mutation Creation, you got Justin Kaboka, uh, Tony Thomas, a few of these, you know, uh, Miguel Garcia from Always Evolving Pythons. These guys have all made videos and I put out some content uh, regarding investing in ball pythons. And just to give you guys a different perspective and just like my point of view when it comes to investing in ball pythons, uh, since I've been Series 6 licensed since I was 21 years old, uh, even though I'm not appointed right now and haven't been dealing in mutual funds or in IRAs or annuities and all that for maybe 10 years now, I still have a lot of information. You don't really lose that kind of stuff. And I always uh, was very into learning about passive income, having multiple streams of income, being able to just, you know, love what you do for a living and, and have money coming in. Most people just don't know how to do it or they just don't have faith that it can be accomplished. But I'm here to tell you today that it definitely is possible. The first thing I'm gonna tell you guys, talk to you guys about is different kinds of goals that people have when it comes to investing. You have to have that in mind. You can't just invest in something and not know, is this gonna be something that I wanna sell next month, next year, in five years, in 10 years? Uh, what's the purpose of the investment? Is it to grow your money? Is it to provide income? Uh, for you later on in life. There's, there's so many uh, different parameters and so many different things that you have to consider when you're investing. And it's not just what you invest in, because even what you invest in, like if you invest in real estate, that has different, you could have a real estate investment that produces income. You could have a real estate investment that you could fix up and flip within a few months. So you could have a real estate investment that you buy, rent out for income, and then you flip you know, ideally that's that's one of the best investments. You buy something property for, let's say a hundred grand, you put 50 grand into it, you're able to rent it out and the market shoots up and you sell the place for 300, 350,000. So you, not only did you get income while you had the property, then you sold it at a high point. And then some people wait till the market goes down because the market's cyclical. So whenever the market goes back down, that's when they reinvest at a lower price. It doesn't make sense to buy something at the highest price. It makes sense to buy something when it's the lowest price. There's a lot of things out there where you can I mean, you could buy stuff at a garage sale for 50 bucks and sell it on eBay for 100, 150. So that right there, as, as far as ROI is concerned, ROI is basically return on investment. If you invest $1,000 and you get $100 back, so let's say, and I'm breaking this down, guys, is a lot of people really don't know what 10% of 1,000 is. They don't even know what 10% out of 100 is. So if you think that this is real basic stuff, believe it or not, it's, it's for a lot of people, it's not. So don't feel bad if you don't know it. Just humble yourself and learn. And then, you know, a lot of this stuff is good for the future, good for other things. Uh, so no matter what, you're gonna learn something today. So $1,000, let's say I made a $100 profit. That's a 10% rate of return. Now it's, you had, a zero, you got a $10,000 investment, $1,000 is what you make on that, and your rate of return is still 10%. For the most part, uh, mutual fund investments, and I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, I'll go back to my notes, is why I have my notes for sure, but uh, for, for, the, for the most part, when, uh, when we learned about mutual funds, back when I was getting my, my Series 6 license, we were taught that a good, reliable rate of return on a diversified mutual fund with, let's say, some uh, really good blue chip stocks and not anything too crazy. You're looking at like General Electric, Walmart, uh, Apple, companies that have been around for decades, companies that, that regularly, pay, regularly pay, pay dividends, uh, companies that you can count on that, yeah, you could always have one company, you know, something happened to a company in a mutual fund, but for the most part, if you have 200 of the largest companies in the world and you're, and they all go bankrupt, trust me, we're gonna have a lot more problems than, 
then your mutual fund or your, or your 401k losing money. We're probably in a new, like who knows, like that, that would be like a global recession or of, 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 of magnitude. And it's just not gonna happen. So guys, to, to go back to what I was talking about when it comes to uh, the type of goals. So you have buy and hold to sell. This is something that I did at the pawn shop regularly. And this is something that people do out there normally. For example, when you, when you buy something to hold and sell, you might be buying a stock that's low and you might be waiting, you might be buying, you know, maybe a thousand or 10,000, 500, a hundred bucks worth of that stock. And your only goal is to buy this because you think it's at a value, it's at a, at a low price, whether it be because it's at a low price compared to what it's been in the years past, maybe the company Maybe the company uh, did something like, for example, when BP, British Petroleum, had a huge oil spill, uh, their stock went down like 40, 50 percent. It went down tremendously. Uh, these guys aren't going anywhere. These guys literally provide oil to most and, and, and uh, gas products to most of the large companies around the world. They're not going anywhere. Their stock went down. They had to pay some money, you know, PR, get involved in everything. And then eventually the stock goes back up. What did a lot of people lost a lot of money because they sold their stock when it was low. Your, your losses aren't realized until you actually sell or, 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 or liquidate that asset. If I have a, a, a home that's worth 200,000 and I'm renting out that home or I live in that home and that home goes down to 100,000, I'm still renting it. My, my rent, I'm not gonna lower my rent on it. So if, so if the value of the home goes down but I'm still renting it, I'm fine. Yeah, in the back of your mind, you're like, wow, you know, my property is, is worth less. But as long as you're still able to rent it, and rent, as far as I'm concerned, in this country has never gone down. So, uh, and it only seems to be getting higher and higher every six months, every year. That's why everybody likes real estate because real estate is just consistent and you can actually make higher than 10% rate of return if your property is actually paid off. It just depends. It depends on, 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 on what you paid for your property. It depends on what you're renting it for. It's just numbers, it's all based on numbers. Don't be worried about your investments going down if you're not planning to sell them. This is why uh, there's a lot of strategies when it comes to investing like when you're young in the beginning you you get a little bit more aggressive You invest more for the long term and then when you get older you start to make your investments a little bit more Lower risk a little bit more conservative and your investments maybe start going into more bonds and things like that until eventually Right before there's no reason that right before you retire. You should be in hundred percent stock funds It just doesn't make any sense even if they're the best stocks in the world There's, there's a lot of great investment vehicles out there that don't produce a lot of return but they, they produce enough to keep up with inflation and then some. So when you already amass your wealth, that's the type of investment that you want to be in. To amass wealth, you can't amass wealth in a CD, in a mutual, in a money market account. You just don't go to the bank. You, you need to invest in other ways, which is why I'm bringing up ball pythons because at the end of the day, and I don't want to you know, veer off too much from ball pythons, but I just want to give you guys a, a, a good foundation about investing so that you understand that it's just not you know, spend 50 grand on snakes and you're gonna make, you know, you become a millionaire next year. It's not, that's not the way it works. So buy and sell, buy and hold to sell, things like that. Uh, buy and sell quickly, like a Pokemon investment. I know people are making tons of money on Pokemon right now. Uh, Luis Alonso from LA Exotics, we're gonna, we're gonna put his, uh, his link below. He, uh, he's been doing great with Pokemon investments and that's something that is an oddity. That's something that most people will say, oh yeah, Pokemon, whatever. You could buy houses with some of these vintage boxes that, that Pokemon has. Maybe now is not the best time to invest in it, but it was a few years ago. And that's one thing I always tell people. Once something is hot and once something is popular, it's too late. The money has been made the and it's over. Like, that's it. Like one, once Bitcoin got to, I don't know how many thousand dollars a, a coin it got to, once it got that high, that's it. The money's over. The money was made. You need to get in there when, the, when it was worthless. Then it did a huge drop then you can make money again because then it went up again so it's like one of those things where you know you just have to as far as i'm it's, it's hard to explain it you really just have to learn and have your own mentality about investing investing and and just after years of reading and 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 speaking to people and and tr and, and, and and all this stuff you really just have an understanding of it so just little by little just try to have an understanding of it and it'll come to you I don't, I don't expect anyone to listen to this video and then be like an investment guru or anything like that because i'm not uh, but it took me a long time to learn all the things that I learned now. So you got buy and hold to sell, buy and sell quickly, something like that. And actually I haven't referred to the ball python investing as far as buy and hold to sell and buy and sell quickly because at the end of the day, I'm not a flipper and I don't condone, uh, you know, buying, you know, hundreds of animals and just like flipping them and selling them to people who aren't gonna take care of them. I, I just, it's not the way that I look at it. I, I've yet to wholesale one animal 
from uh, I've given animals away to, to teachers, to friends of mine that have had setups and stuff like that. Uh, and then probably this year I may have to wholesale some animals out. I'm going to be very methodical about it and make sure they go to the best places. But when it when it comes to investing in ball pythons, it's just it's, it's a little different than when it comes to just monetary, you know, black and white. I'm buying it for this. I'm selling it for that because they are live creatures or animals. They they deserve more respect than just a price tag, even though they do commend price tags and you can have a collection that's worth a lot of money and produces you a great amount of income. My third point, which is buy and receive income, is really more about the long term, more about what am I going to do in 20, 30 years. So buy and receive income. Let's say you've already amassed wealth, whether it's investing in mutual funds, an IRA, your 401k at work, um, whether it's buying real estate, whether it's just buying stuff out of storage units and flipping them on eBay. There's just so many ways to make money out there. But let's just say you get to a point where you have money saved up and you just want to withdraw income from that money. There's a lot of things that you need to know when you have like, if you have an IRA or 401k, you can't just withdraw money from that account. You have to roll that over into a qualified tax account. There's, I'll, I'll probably do a video when it, you know, about taxes and it might not, I'm not a tax professional, but I can go over a few things. Um, for the most part, you just have to be in qualified investments. You're always going to pay taxes. That's something that no one can get away from, but there's, there's qualified accounts where you can pay less in taxes, uh, other accounts where they don't have great tax benefits, where you have to pay more in taxes. You know, there's even vehicles, like for example, uh, hands down the best thing besides the, your 401k at work that contributes. If your 401k at work contributes, max it out. The second thing, Roth IRA, because you can put all your money in there and it grows tax-free and you can withdraw it tax-free when you retire. There are rules, you can only invest up to, I believe right now it's $5,000 a year. If I'm wrong, I could be, I haven't even looked that up in seven or eight years, so it, it might've changed. As the last time I knew it was about 5,000 a year. Um, you can't go over that. Uh, you have to withdraw your money, I believe when you're 59 and a half years old. And there's a limit. There's, you know, some people need to invest more than $5,000 a year. So that's just one, uh, one example. There are three things about investing. There's the three D's of investing. There's diversify. Discipline. And dollar cost averaging. Let me just write that out, guys. Plain and simple, diversification means that you don't put all your eggs in one basket, which is why I love ball pythons because I could have, you know, 40 grand in a mutual fund, I can have 100 grand in snakes, I can have $100,000 on a, in a duplex property that I rent out. And if one thing, if, if the ball python market, which it hasn't, but if for whatever reason, I just can't sell snakes, I have other investments that are still producing me money. If I have uh, a rental property that I can't rent out for whatever reason, I have other investments that are still producing me money. If my stocks or my uh, investments go down, I have other things that are, you know, it, it's very unlikely for everything to go down and it's very unlikely for everything to go up. What you want to do is you want to diversify and not have all your eggs in one basket so that if one basket falls, you lose one egg, you don't lose all your eggs. Now you could diversify within different sectors, you can say, I want to diversify within stocks and you can, you can buy a hundred stocks and say, well, I'm diversified because I have a hundred different stocks. Yeah, technically you are. It's probably better than to buy one stock, you know, with all the money. But the way I looked, I like to look at diversification is you diversify within diversifying. You want to be able to have, you know, a ball python collection, but you don't just want to have pies. You don't just want to have clowns. You don't just want to have highways. You want to have Plides, counts, highways, exantics, maybe puzzles, whatever you like. You gotta have stuff that, that you like. When it comes to you know, investing in stocks and things like that, you don't have to like the stock. You don't, it, doesn't have, it doesn't have to be sexy. But if you want a snake, yeah, it's gotta be sexy. You gotta buy snakes that you like, snakes that you can promote, that you can produce. At the end of the day, yeah, Walmart can make you money. Walmart's not sexy. Walmart is what it is. It's just an investment. And it's not really gonna make you that much money. It's more of an investment to just kind of keep up with inflation and know that you know walmart's not going to go anywhere anytime soon all right so we covered diversify now discipline 
That's the most important thing that I've noticed for most people. There's no discipline when it comes to investing um, in stocks. You want to buy a stock today. Some people want to buy a stock today for, for 20 bucks and then expect it to go up to 50 bucks in a week. Uh, and if it doesn't, they, you know, they get frustrated and, and what they end up doing is they end up selling the stock for less than what they bought it for. Then after the penalties, they end up losing money on the whole transaction. They're like, oh, investing, there's no money in investing. Or people, you know, invest money into a, into a ball python project. When it comes to ball python projects, you have to see your projects through. You can't just, you know, breed, uh, you know, make, uh, for example, you're gonna say you're getting into a new project right now and you buy yourself a, uh, a spot nose for a perfect example. You buy a, you buy a spot nose ball python. Uh, you breed it to a handful of animals and you make a few, you know, cool looking things, but nothing out of this world. So you give up on the project, you sell your animals, I'm not doing anything with this. And then someone like the late, you know, Ben Rennick comes out with a spot nose clown. What does that do? Blows up the spot nose uh, market. So that's basically, you, you can look at spot nose as a stock that was low and then something great is created with it and that stock of that particular animal goes up it's there's nothing you know uh justin kaboka he's he's i always refer to him but he's he's, he's one of the best and so is ozzy boyds they're, they're they're one of the best at being able to 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 add value to genes that have already been in the market for for, for years some of these genes have been around for 20 years and these guys are creating new things that are just giving life and then creating this uh, this momentum and, and, and this stuff and, and, and it's a beautiful thing But you have to be disciplined You have to understand that if you're investing in something if it's a long-term investment, it's a long-term investment If it's a short-term investment. It's a short-term investment When you start mixing things up and start getting things confused is when you start losing money You can get lucky people get lucky all the time, but Discipline is very important. Discipline on your stocks, discipline with your projects, and things like that. This is not, I'm not talking about discipline when it comes to, you know, making sure your snakes are clean and making sure you wake up early. That's, you know, that's, that's something else. This is, this is, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a whole other video, man. I'll I, I have my mom make a video for you guys on, on waking up early and, and doing your laundry. So, dollar cost average. And I hope you guys uh, give a special shout out to my son, Skyler. He donated, he let me borrow his, uh, his little Crayola thing so that I can just do some stuff for you guys so give Skylar a little shout out there all right guys a few things that I want to talk to you about just a few points for example losses are not realized until assets are liquidated that's something that I, that I mentioned earlier so don't think that because your your asset goes down whether it's a your mutual fund your, your your real estate property or anything like even if you buy for example the banana ball python let me give you guys an example right now we'll give you some math banana ball python when the bananas came out, the people I paid $100,000 for these snakes. Hundred grand for a snake. Ridiculous money, right? Okay. Over the years, this snake has gone down in value little by little to the point where I would say, I don't know how many years it's been since this animal came to the market. Let's just say, let's just say 15 years or something like that. Maybe it's only 10. Honestly, I, I really 100% don't know at this moment. Right now you could buy these $100,000 snake about a decade ago. You, you could buy these guys for 150 bucks a piece right now. So you're looking at your $100,000 investment is now worth 150 bucks. So if you're looking at it, like I'm going to buy this banana ball python and I'm going to hold them for 20 years and then I'm gonna retire, you're pretty much out of luck. That's not the way um, investing in ball pythons works. When you look at something like a banana ball python, which is an incomplete dominant mutation, which we all know it's a lot easier to create incomplete dominant mutations than it is to create reset, visual recessive mutations, which is the market understands that now and People are focusing more on recessives, double recessives, triple recessives, also incomplete dominance, but incomplete dominance by themselves without any recessives attached are not bringing in that big money because people realized these animals are too easily duplicated. So my investment is not very secure. If, if, if someone else can make what I just paid $100,000 for, you can make 20 of them next year. Yeah, they're another 50, then 20, then 10, then five, then 1,000. What it really boils down to, is the person that went and spent a hundred thousand dollars on a banana ball python went and bred that banana 
if they were if they were smart and actually looked at it as an investment back then it, it was really more of a let's produce as many bananas as we can because ultimately you paid a hundred thousand dollars for a snake you want to be able to recuperate your money make a profit and you know and, and, and start making cool combos now the problem is that people just started making bananas people stopped people didn't think let me start making banana clowns banana pies banana clown pies if people would have started making stuff like that years ago, it, it would have been a completely different story. There are people that did and, and right now are, are producing, you know, banana recessive bananas and double recessive bananas that are selling for, for still big money. Now, you breed that banana that costs you $100,000, you just breed them to five girls. You don't have an ultrasound or anything, you're just breeding them to five girls. You're breeding them to basic stuff too. You're breeding them to, let's say, like a pastel. You're breeding them to a Mojave. You know, you're breeding them to a to like a lesser, let's just even say, oh, the coveted spider. And then what else? Uh, let's say, let's say pie, just to put a recessive in there. Now you paid $100,000 for this banana ball python. You bred them to all these girls, and the next year, your banana ball python is worth half fifty thousand dollars anybody who's in investing and their uh, their investment goes down 50 percent it's taking a crap taking a huge honestly guys you know part of my french if you bred him to five females and you only got a couple of them to go the pie didn't go the mojave didn't go let's just say the pastel the lesser and the spider went let's just even let's say the, the spider didn't even go either the lesser and the pastel you had 10 eggs Incomplete dominant, incomplete dominant, your, your, your chances of making, reproducing bananas, reproducing pastels and lessers is all 50%. So your, your odds of producing a pastel banana, breeding banana to pastel is 25%. Your odds of producing the same thing with lesser and all that. Let's just say guys that you, ma that you made one pastel banana and one lesser banana that's it you have 10 eggs let's just say you kept the rest there were some normals a banana whatever you got to keep stuff back you only sold these two animals what are you selling them for guys you know like yeah bananas are bananas went down in price they're half now you bought a male you bred them you made a few babies it doesn't matter if it went down 50 50 percent you're selling a pastel banana for probably, even if you just sold it for 50 grand, you, you already recuperated half of the money from your banana from last year. Then guess what, lesser banana? Let's say another 50 grand. You just paid off your $100,000 investment after one year. There's money in everything. When it comes to ball, when it comes to breeding reptiles, you can't do this with, 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 with any other species, basically. I mean, these animals, not only do they produce amazing looking uh, genetic mutations, but they're worth money. People pay good money for these animals. You got to have, you got to market yourself well. You got to produce quality animals. You have to go the extra mile with people, have good customer service. I, I invested <laughs> I invested almost two grand just on my snake bags. But it's one of those things where when someone gets one of those snakes in one of the bags, they're like, wow, you know, like, and, and I'm not doing this to do the least I can and make the most I can. I'm doing this. I put in, I put so much into this that I don't even look at what I put into it. I don't look at whether I made money or not, I honestly don't. I have no idea. Another thing I want to talk to you about is on my, on my topic here, don't concern yourself so much with what's gonna make me money. Focus more on doing all the right things that you know have to be done because then the money's gonna come, the business is gonna come. Don't look at it as, how can I get my people to spend money with me? No, look at it as, what's the best version of myself and what's the best version of my company and, and, and what's the type of person that that I want to spend money with and that I want to you know look and see and if I want if, if I see someone that's doing great things in the hobby I might copy a few things that they're doing nothing wrong with that you know you know they have nicer bags I, I might get a nice bag they have nice racks I might spend a little bit more on my racks stuff like that so I digress we're gonna go back to the investment part so you look at it right here you already got your money back from this investment and you have eight hold back animals that next year 
doesn't even matter if ball pythons, if, if, if the banana ball python, it doesn't matter if it goes down to $10,000. And it did, and there were people still spending $10,000 on those, like tons of people, and they were producing them. If you're on your if you're disciplined, if you if you have the rats, I'm gonna show you guys, you know, I have, I have almost 40 rat bins in, in the next room. I, I don't love cleaning rats. I don't love taking care of rats. It's not my thing, but I have to keep my animals fed. I can show you every tub in here. Every girl that I've been breeding is massive. They're, excellent body weight. Be proud of yourself. Have a little bit of pride in what you're doing, you know? Let's say the, the, the bananas go down to 10 grand. Who cares? You literally have uh, eight holdbacks that are adults now that you could sell or you could breed. You could eat, even, even if you sold bananas for 5,000, 10,000, or even some really nice combos for $15,000, you make a banana pies and banana clowns and stuff like that. Back then when bananas were 10 grand, I guarantee you made a banana pie or banana clown. People weren't making them back then though. You made one back then, you're, you're gonna sell the animal for tens of thousands of dollars. It's just the way you look at it. Now, you buy that banana for 100 grand, you don't breed them to anybody or you just breed them to three female normals. You, you, you sh you're not the type of person that should have spent $100,000 on a ball python if you don't have the right females to breed it to. I just spent a few thousand on a powerful male, uh, but I have the females for him. It'd be ridiculous for me to spend a ton of money on that animal and then say, well, I don't have anything to breed them to or I'm going to make heads that everybody else already has. It just doesn't make any sense. Don't think about projects losing value. Think about what's the what can I do with this project to set me apart from everybody else? And what can I do with this project to ultimately increase the value on it? Like, I, like right now, I'm strong on the blackhead clown stuff. I bought a female. 1200 gram, uh, a little over two years old from Ralph Davis a few years ago. I bred her to a leopard spot nose head clown male. That group of animals that I bought, I actually spent $15,000 on six animals. For a lot of people, that isn't a lot of money in the ball python world. It's like, oh, 15 grand, I, I bought one animal for that. Well, uh, when I spent that kind of money, it was honestly something that I still honestly did not. One of the things that, that I'll tell you guys and one of those things that I've learned from multi-level marketing companies I've been in the past and, and just general uh, psychology of people. People don't just don't believe that it's real, to be honest with you. When, when, when people see a price tag on a snake, if you're new to this and you see a $15,000 price tag, 10000 50000 you think it's ridiculous. You think it, yeah, that's just a number they put on there. It's, it's, and you just have no idea that there are people out there spending. I don't want to say, let's not even say a hundred grand. That's a hundred grand is very difficult for anyone to ever sell a snake for that kind of money. Five figures, 10 grand. Yeah, it's possible. I've already sold a snake for 10 grand, you know? So, and I don't say that to impress you or anything. I say that to impress upon you the importance of, of, of understanding if you spend money on good genes with from good people and, and, and you do, what you're doing the right way, people notice that and people will spend money with you. You will have more of a, of a belief in the system. It's, there's two things, there's, there's, there's belief in, is, is this whole thing real? Like when I was in, you know, I, I knew people making 500,000 to like four or five million dollars a year just selling life insurance and mutual funds. And I just thought, is this real? Is this all just a show that these people are putting on to get me to, you know, pay 20 bucks a month to, you know, for this internet program or whatever. And it's honestly, yeah, there's a ton of people making tons of money. Do you believe that you can do it? Which is the biggest thing that I, that, that I, that I believe is important for everyone to think about is that yes, there's money out there. There's people, there's people spending 20 grand on a bag of horses to literally put inside their female horse to, to make a baby horse that they're not even planning to sell. So there's money out there, guys, like literally, um, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's crazy. So the whole thing is, do you believe that you can do it? Do you believe that you can actually spend 15 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand on snakes? Can you, you know, produce babies? Can you sell them? Can you take good pictures? Can you market them? Can you come up with a good logo? Can you, you know, uh, be consistent on your Instagram and Facebook and, and open up a YouTube page and go to shows and network with people and just be nice and be, are you, are you honest? Are, are you someone who's, you know, who's on top? You know, it, it just, there's a lot of things that go into it. Just to give you my example about this, about my snakes, $15,000, I'm just gonna show you one of my girls here. This is a little holdback female from this one clutch I'm gonna talk to you guys about. And right now she's about a year old, let's say about 800 grams or so. And I believe this is a spot nose blackhead clown. 
I honestly can't guarantee that it's blackhead yet because I really have to prove her out and she's darker than most uh, spot nose clowns, but I honestly, uh, I really just don't know guys. But this is a female holdback that I was able to hold back who right now is, I mean, she's worth a, a pretty penny right now. And the most important thing about breeding too is you gotta breed for yourself. You gotta keep animals back that you want for yourself and then other animals you could sell the animals that you don't need or the animals that are maybe like the byproduct of what you're trying to make. I spent $15,000 on a group of snakes. From, from, from those animals consisted of a blackhead clown, two enchi clowns. These are, these, besides the blackhead clown, these other clowns were, um, were proven females I had just laid. So I ended up getting a blackhead clown, about two years old, virgin, never laid, never was bred. Two Enchi clowns, proven breeder females, and three regular uh, clown girls. Then also I picked up a Leo spot nose heck clown from, uh, from Louis Alonzo. I got these girls from Ralph Davis and I got that male from, uh, from Louis Alonzo. And my goal was to breed him to all those girls and start off a, a clown project. I always said that I never wanted to make this about the money. And I'm still holding true to that to this day and I will always be that way. I'm never gonna do a pairing thinking of how much money it's gonna produce me. I do a pairing thinking of what kind of cool shit can I make with this? Because no matter what, you do the right thing guys, you make the right pairings, you have good genes and you have good stuff, you're gonna make the money. It's about, do it for the right reasons because the money isn't gonna keep you in the, in the hobby long term. It ain't gonna keep you in anything. It's more beautiful when, you can, when, when, when you're thinking about stuff for every reason besides what it costs, the monetary value of things. I brought all those animals together. Long story short, I ended up producing a uh, two Leo blackhead clowns. I made an Enchi spot nose clown. I made that uh, spot nose possible blackhead clown. I made a leopard blackhead head clown. I made leopard clowns, spot nose clowns. I made beautiful, a, a, a really, I made a Batman. I only made one Batman from, the, from, from all those females. I was just able to get one Batman. But I sold that Batman for 3,500 bucks as a hatchling. You know, and, and then the other animals that I sold, I, I was able to sell four animals and pay for my entire group of breeding stock that I bought just maybe like a year, year and a half before. Guys, it's amazing. I was able to pay off my investment in one year. I mean, let's, say, let's, let's say a year and a half. I was able to pay off my investment in a year and a half. I was able to hold back a couple females and uh, a couple males. I was able, able, to, able, able to breed and, and, and have gravid girls from one of those leopard, leopard blackhead clown males. I was able to sell one to somebody in the hobby that has a, a, a small boutique collection similar to mine that's you know, a very cool guy. Shout out to Barry. And I was able to keep a few animals back for the future. So the best of, the best of both worlds, I, I made money, I kept animals that I liked, I made contacts in the hobby, and the biggest thing, I made a belief, I created a belief system for myself knowing that if you do the right things, people will notice it, people will we'll spend money with you. You know, it feels good when people talk to you and say, hey, I know you, you're, aren't you this guy, man? Your snakes look so nice on their displays. Oh man, I love your pictures. Oh, you know, your blackheads are, are nicer than so many other, you know, blackheads that I see out there. Or your, you know, your, past, your citrus pastel line is so beautiful, your highways. I love that, guys. I, no one's giving me, they're just giving me comments and I just, I, I love it. I love hearing, you know, you're doing good stuff. Your animals are nice. You know, I like your marketing. I like your name, Creme de la Clutch. Like I came up with that name and I, and I love it. It's just something that I, that I feel so proudly about. So whenever you come up with your name, come up with something catchy, something that you like, something you can live with and you don't want to change in the future. Marketing yourself and marketing your snakes, branding, detail your listings. Okay, detailed listings. This is an investment topic, but guys, if you're putting up a snake for sale for a few thousand dollars, write a description about it. You know, don't just put a snake, a picture of one picture. You have a premium morph market account and you have five pictures available, yet you take one crappy picture, you have $4,000 snake, don't write the pairing, don't write anything about it. Honestly, like, I don't know, like just, that's when it comes to putting pride into what you're doing, write a description. 
I usually go and I fill out my entire description. I have words that I want to write that I can't even put in there. So I got to delete stuff and add stuff. I want someone to see my picture and say, wow. Then read my description and say, wow. And then read my about seller profile and say, yeah. This guy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy a snake from this guy. This, this is somebody that isn't some dude like living in his mom's basement, breeding snakes out of freaking aquariums or whatever. Nothing wrong with aquariums, but you know, if you're breeding on a large scale and you have aquariums, it's not good. Um, okay, so diversifying, discipline, dollar cost averaging. You gotta stick with your projects. You gotta stick with your stocks, stick with your real estate, stick with genes you're working with, think outside the box, create new stuff. Uh, this is all about ingenuity. The people that are doing the best things out there, the people that are creating the stuff that nobody has. It's okay to make hats. It's okay to make double hats. Go for the long odds. Don't go for the short guaranteed stuff. I have, you know, I have like a leopard, I have a pastel leopard enchi champagne head pie that could breed him to a, bu to a bunch of other girls. And I was like, well, I can guarantee, you know, I have leopard enchi pies, they sell, you know, all day for X amount of dollars. But then I have a Hidden Gene Woma head pied meal that has a lot less genes, but no one's working with Hidden Gene Woma pied stuff. I mean, very few people, I think Frank Monroe and a few other people are working with Hidden Gene Woma. I know Frank is intensely. Even if I just made a, a Hidden Gene Woma pied, I'd rather have a Hidden Gene Woma pied than a pastel leopard enchi pied. Cause you can get a pastel leopard enchi pied all day anywhere. You can't really find the Hidden Gene Woma pied or a pastel Hidden Gene Woma pied or Hidden Gene Woma mystic pied. And then now I bred him also to my leopard pied female to make some Hidden Gene Woman leopard pieds. No one's made stuff like that. Hidden Gene Woman and leopard have been around for years and so has pied. And I just don't know why I'm the first person doing it. And then so many other things that I'm doing for the first time. So if you're starting off and you're seeing this and you're saying, man, everybody's already made everything. No, there's so many things out there. I have highway clown projects here. I have super gravel clown stuff, hypo ghost stuff, desert ghost clown stuff. It's just, you know, and I'm making double heads of that stuff. I mean, even if I had, to, even if I wanted to go buy a desert, a desert ghost clown for like 10 grand, who's going to sell it to me? Nobody has them. When they go out for sale and someone puts 10 grand, there's people that are waiting and snatch them up, you know, like Bob Vu, shout out to Bob Vu, you know, from, uh, from Bob's Balls. And, and it's funny because people, someone from Europe posted two of those uh, desert ghost clown combos for like 20 grand. And so many people laughed at them. Not knowing that there's people in this hobby with, with deep pockets that are just waiting to buy Desert Ghost Clown Combos. That's an investment, 20 grand. Give me those two, give me that pair right now. I'll breed my most stellar male to the female, maybe make some visual clowns head Desert Ghost. And then with like black head and leopard and yellow belly and gravel and champagne and all kinds of stuff. Guys, it's just, it's just there's so much to do. Find your niche, find your market. Find what you love, either the dark side or the light side or both. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to kind of go to the dark side a little bit, but I have a lot of light projects that I really, really, really like too. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's the projects I don't have. I don't have Albino, I don't have Exantic. It's okay because I have a limited space and I don't want to work with everything. I'd rather be very well known for clowns or highway clowns or something like that instead of just, and yeah, he has everything, you know? When you go to someone like, like John Dog, you know, from uh, JD from JD Constrictors. He's got black and white table. It's all like SK Exantic. It's beautiful. When you look at it, when you say SK Exantic, you think of, of, of him. That's just, he's marketed himself in the way where he's he's more SK Exantic than, than the snake keepers are, you know? <laughs> so, uh, there's, there's, you know, there's invest annuities, snakes, stocks, tax deeds, livestock. That's the difference between someone that does this for a living or does, you know, you could have your own job. You could be a, there's people that, that actually love their jobs and their careers or their businesses and they just do this on the side. They don't want to do this full time. I actually, that's why I started the hemp business too because I started using it. I love this so much that I decided to make a business out of it. And this, I could focus on making money and just, and just I already know the product is, is superior and I could just focus more on making money and I don't have to worry about my snakes at all. I've never had to sell a snake to pay a bill and I wanna keep it that way. I don't want to say, okay, I'm making these projects, I have to make 80 grand next year on my snakes or I'm not gonna be able to pay my bills. I, that's, not, that's not something that I wanna, I wanna go down that path. So just to leave you with the a, with a last, uh, last few little tidbits, guys, what makes a good investment? In my opinion, it's four things. Does it make money? Obviously. Is it simple? or simple to you? How complicated is it? Obviously owning, opening up a restaurant is, is, is a lot more difficult than, in my opinion, for example, than uh, doing a lawn service business. So it just depends on, you know, on, on that. 
And if, you know, buying stocks online is simpler than anything else. But if you don't know how to buy stocks online, you're not going to be, you know, doing pretty good. How high? How far? Longevity. How high can it go? Gold, for example. Do you really think gold's going to go to three, four thousand dollars an ounce? It's not likely. So the ceiling on gold has already been, in my opinion, it's been reached already. Unless it's like new world order type stuff. Even then, you have no idea if gold's going to get that high. I would say that produce and, and, and land and things like that would probably go higher because people can't eat gold, but you can grow stuff on land and you can do stuff like that. That'll probably be better. Uh, longevity. Is this is this just a fad? Like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy and sell Beanie Babies for a living. That if you did that, that didn't probably work out really well for you because it's just their fads. Some people can say that the ball python thing is a fad. Uh, it's not a fad if it's been going on for like 30 years and it's just growing every year. This has become a lifestyle to most people. I don't ever see myself not having at least snakes to, to, to some degree. I don't expect to ever have a huge amount. I personally like to, if you go to every tub here, I, I, I personally like to go through every single tub and clean everything myself, change all my water bowls, um, breed all my own snakes, feed all my own snakes. I don't like, I've never had anyone come in here and, and, and feed a snake, change a water bowl, I've never had anyone clean my rats before. And you look in here and everybody, everybody's clean on hemp. And the last thing guys is taxes. So you gotta know when you sell ball pythons, you go to a show, you can do cash and stuff like that. When you're selling snakes at a high level, you may have to incorporate, you may have to you know, get an accountant, but that's a good problem to have because you're making money. Uh, other investments like stocks, mutual funds, you have to worry about like capital gains taxes, you gotta worry about you know, income tax, you gotta worry about double taxation. There's just those type of things when it comes to taxes is what makes a good investment is net, is what you take home. It's not what you make, it's what you take. It's, am I making, I'm making 30% on this investment, but if I'm being taxed at 40%, I'm not making, you know, 30% of my investment. I'm making like 16 or 17 or 18% or something like, like 18%, I believe. No, what makes, what makes money, obviously. How simple is it or, or, or how easy or simple is it to you? Do you love it? Do you have a passion for it? Those type of things. What's the ceiling? How high can you take it? And nothing lasts forever. Your, your mind might change in a few years. I've, I've changed my ideas of businesses multiple times. I've, I had a, I've been in mutual funds and life insurance and I had a pawn shop and I've sold electronics and I've sold timeshares and all kinds of stuff. And it just really depends on, on what you want. It depends on your goals, short term, long term for today, for tomorrow, for 50 years from now. And at the end, I just wanna leave you guys with this the last thing is really just, you know, you can, obviously there's, there's plenty of money to making snakes. I'm making money breeding snakes. I'm not focusing on making money breeding snakes. I'm focusing on breeding what I like. I'm, I'm spending it, even though I've, I've sold, you know, snakes for several, I, I always put money back into my collection. I'm buying new genes or new projects that I like or that I want to integrate into my own. I don't look at it as what pairings can I do to make money. I don't look, I, I just look at making, I want to make cool stuff. And no matter what, if you have good, good quality, high quality animals, and you're making good stuff, you're going to make money. So don't focus on the money, focus on your branding, focus on your husbandry, focus on your social media, focus on being nice to people when they send you an email saying, hi, how are you? And talk to people. If you're breeding snakes and you, and, and, and you have stuff going on, obviously if you're, if you're an established big breeder, you don't have an hour to talk to everybody on the phone, but if you're a smaller guy like me, you have time to talk to people. You have time to, you should want to. You should want to talk to people. You should want to build relationships and learn from people that are in the hobby. You know, uh, the other day I spent a good amount of time the other day with somebody I never spoken to on the phone who's been in this hobby for, for a long time. And, and it, it was an amazing experience. I, I was able to learn a lot. It was somebody that I've seen him sell snakes for years. And he ended up buying a snake for me. He ended up buying the most expensive snake I've ever sold. And that was a goal that I had for 2021 and I accomplished it in 2020, before even 2021. But it's, but, but it's been a goal of mine since like last year. It's been, I wanna make a snake that somebody that I consider a big dog in this business will call me or reach out to me and say, hey man, like, I want that snake. I gave it to him at a better price than I had it listed for, not by a whole lot, but a little bit better. Honestly, I just told them, look man, I'm just happy that you're just calling me and want an animal from me. Because that to me just means, it means, it means a lot. It's like you have a catering business and you have somebody who, who could call anybody and buy and, and do their catering for them, but they want you to do it because they like your, they like what you're doing. They, they, they can spend their money with anybody. Trust me, if you got 10 grand to spend on a snake, you can spend it with a lot of people that is that are not me. You can spend it with a lot of people that have been here 
for many years and all that kind of stuff. But you know, at the end of the day, I'm doing all the right things. And 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 he mentioned that he likes certain things about how I do things. And I and I really just I do it all from the heart. Uh, how how Cuban say no tengo pelo en la lengua. I don't have any hair on my tongue, so I just uh, everything that I say is just it comes from the heart, uh, which can get you in trouble sometimes. So don't always do that. But uh, I pretty much. Um, I people just say how it is, and I just give my own perspective, my own points of views. I, I went back when I was when I was investment licensed, and I went back to my old high school, and I was able to retire. If anybody out there knows who he is, you know, big shout out to Dan Fairchild. I was able to go back to my old high school and was able to retire my old economics teacher, who was an economics teacher, and he didn't know a lot about mutual funds, a lot about how the market worked. I was able to go in there, able to retire him from the FRS, the Florida Retirement System, because I was able to give him options he didn't have before. We made him a ton of money in the stock market, in the end of 2008, it's just a beautiful story. I wonder one of these days I'm gonna interview him. We're gonna go over some of the stuff that he did and some of the stuff so you guys can see over like a like over like a 15 year period what somebody, what someone can do. Even someone that had a career doing something else for 35 years, literally started doing a whole nother career out of nowhere, making more money than he could ever imagine. Guys, I hope you really liked the video. Um, if you have any questions, please comment. If there's anything you want me to go more into depth into there's you know I, I had a lot of stuff written down and i go off on a lot of tangents because i have a lot of anxiety so i end up going into into a lot of things that i think i want to cover and then i forget to go back so you just you know, kind of bear with me a little bit and if there's anything that you want to want me to go over just just write me a comment let me know i can break stuff down a little bit more and just things like that and i will be disclosing more stuff in the future more investment related things with snakes and with uh, maybe like rodent breeding and I've done a lot of math with rodent breeding maybe eventually I might just get a huge building and do a large rodent facility to breed here in Florida because uh, there's a lack of rodents. The rodents are not available right now so that's that's a big business. People don't want to sell rats but you know hey if you're making money you can actually just pay someone to clean your rats for you. And at the end of the day this is not the type of business where you're gonna clean rats 50 hours a week, you know, but I digress. We'll, we'll go into that in another topic, another video, guys. So if you haven't already, please like, share, subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you wanna, what you think. If you, anything else you want me to go over later on or any more, I mean, just let me know. I'm, I'm just here doing content for you guys. So uh, I appreciate any feedback. Thank you. Have a great day.